G'day, g'day, I'll try it again. G'day, this is Steve, Woodworking Masterclass. Welcome to the workshop. And I've got some stuff to do. I don't know what I'm gonna be doing, but I know I've got jobs, so I'll just knock them over one by one. And we can have a chat, which sounds really good to me. So if you want to, get in the chat room. If you're new to the uh, channel, please hit the subscribe button and the bell, and you'll get notifications when I'm on. I don't stream regularly at the moment because I've got so much other stuff going on in my life. But when I can come down here, particularly in this stinking hot weather, turn the air conditioner on and do some woodworking, I'm more than happy to do it. So, what I forgot to do, I've got to put this back on which we routed yesterday and I had a bit of a mess on the, the router. This bit ripped out, but it's okay because it's oversized, so that's been saved. I've got to clean the sound box up which I glued together on the stream yesterday. Um, unfortunately, when I finished the stream, the belt on my Laguna BX14 broke. So I've had to order a new one of those. So I won't be using the bandsaw today, I don't think. I'll have to use the table saw, which is a nuisance, but we'll see how we go. No promises, um, could be some gaps along the way. Who knows? So let's get this rock show underway. As usual, thank you to Telstra for the crap internet service that I've got. There's going to be a lot of lags and a lot of uh, uh, uh going on. But there you're again, when you're a big telco, you don't have to worry about the little bloke that's making you rich, do you? I could go into a rant over that. In fact, I'm going into town today to get some chook food. And I'm going to go and give them a serve because it is not good enough. Oh dear, oh dear, where are we? Just trying to get the chat room up. As soon as I do that, I will be good. There we go. Where do we get chat? Where's chat come in? Dum, ba, dum, dum. Everything is on sale right I don't want to listen to the ad. Ah, dear. So, first of all, I've got to see how square this sound box is and if I've got to do any modifications to it, then I'll see if I can find the right size um, jig so I can cut this to the proper size and we'll see how we go. I'm going to give that a bit of a sand and I'm going to fit some edge trimming onto another one that I did the other day. That one's nearly finished so we might even see if we can fit that harp together and see what happens. Maxwell, good morning. Hey, you're first in class. Good on you, mate. How is the wonderful world of brooms keeping you? Are you Making a clean sweep, no pun intended. Ha! And I wonder how a sockless Trevor is. I bet you he'll come on now you're here. His mentor. Good to see you, mate. Ah, uh, okay. Let's see. I still haven't got my coffee flavouring, so I'm drinking just straight coffee, with, which is nice, but I do like having a little hint of butterscotch in there. All right, this is this one here. So I've got a bit more work to do on that, obviously. Oh. Yeah, let's see how I go with that. But we can work on this later. Let's just have a bow peep at what needs to be done. Right away, I can see Here's a bit proud, so I've got to clean that up with a blocky. Um, back looks pretty good. So I'll just touch that up with um, a bit of sandpaper. The back here, I can clean up the block plane. Uh, I've got some glue and gunk there. I've got to... Oh, no, that's cork from the pads I put in. And we'll just, just have a bit of a clean up to start with. Where's my block plane? Oh, dear. Which way the grain's going so I don't rip more out than I've already done. We'll go that way, so we'll put that one on there and have that one there. And I'm just wondering. Oh, I might even do that. I can put it in the HT Gordon tail vice. Uh, what I do um, when I use the tail vice. On timber, 
I actually put a wooden peg in there as opposed to a brass plate peg, which is great, but this is finished, so I don't want to mark it. Uh, that's why I'm using a timber, timber peg in there. And to hold it there, I think I'll just put in uh, one of these things, which is a bench hook. And that's in the vise, and that's not going to go anywhere. And just to slop it sliding that way, I'll put a bench dog in there. So that is all good. Matter of fact, I'll nip that up a bit. And away we go. That's the other thing I'll do. Possibly use a bigger plane on that, so I will. Oh, actually, that's, a, that's another thing I could do to hold it in. I? Actually, put a hold down on it. There we go. Why isn't that? Possibly just because it's not. I, I have no idea. I'll give this a bit of a encouragement to stay still. And there we go. Well, that's interesting. All right, what I'll do is put that. That's not going to hold. What was that hole for? It must have been for something different. Okay, so I'll put this one in here. I'll move that up to there. That can go there. Give her a bit of a nudge. That's all right. A little bit up on that end. The hardest thing you, you got when you're doing this sort of stuff is holding it nice and still and flat. But I think we we've, we've got it now. Okay, that feels wonderful. Hang on, I've got, I've got that happening, but I've got nothing else going on. I might have to go over to the other, because my live chat's not coming through on the phone. And I just noticed on the computer, uh, so there you go, Max, I thought you were all by yourself, we've got uh, Louis and Vince and the kid's dad, wood species, that particular wood species. I'll, I'll just try and see if I can get it up on here again. Then I don't have to keep on going over to the... Um, computer. I'm just trying, trying to see if I can get live chat up here. Live chat. Okay. Oh, there you go. Everyone's there now. Uh, wood species. This particular one is 
Um, um, Queensland walnut. So that's the sapwood there. This is a nice figured walnut, which is good. And the sound box is out of the same tree. So that's good. And it's quite a pretty timber, but when it's wet, oh boy, does it stink. It's, um, yeah, I won't tell you what it's called. Colloquially, but if you know anyone in the furniture industry or the timber industry, ask them what the colloquial name is. The first word is dog. The second word ain't wood. <laughs> so now I'm cleaning up this head ring. Uh, I'm trying not to chip out on the, the edges, but that's more professional pride than anything else because it's going to get covered up with um, strips, which we shall put on very soon. And this has got to have a four degree bevel on it, which you can do before you put it together, but you're much better off planing it in once it's glued up. And that way it marries to the sides quite nicely. And here we go. Here we go, that's looking good. So what have we got? Uh, Louise, g'day, how are you? Or Louie, sorry. G'day, g'day, Vince. Mate, I want your job. It sounds like a classic. Hang on, let's go there. I, I, I'm, I'm beside myself today. I'm with someone else. Um, I've got to remember to press the buttons, don't I? Louie, g'day. What's the local time uh, in California? It's 20 past five. Here it is 20 past 11 on, 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 on Wednesday morning. Lovely to have you along. <coughs> Yeah, I don't know if the rev up will do any good, but I'll give them a serve. Oh, dear, oh, dear. But generally, you've got protected little puddings wrapped in cotton wool in their corners. Don't be rude to them. They can give you absolutely rubbish service and everything else, but you're not allowed to be angry. You're just meant to sit there and accept it. Yeah, no. Ha! Ah, you've closed the broom factory, Max. So you're just a man of leisure now. <clears throat> Sounds awesome. Uh, G'day, Jared. How are you? What have we got? Peter H. Hi, Stephen. Everyone, well, g'day, Peter H. I had an uncle called Peter, so his initial would have been Peter H too. But he passed away about a month ago. Um, okay, so they're nice and straight. So what we've got to do... <clears throat> is this is the front so now we've got to have a look at the back and see how that's looking this is high here you can see it's sitting proud so i've just got to knock that back with a plane if i was not so lazy i'd go to the shed and well stick it over the Jointer, but this will be fine. Okay. Hold that in place, pull that in there. See a bit better what I'm doing. I'll show you. I see the top of my coffee mug. 
So this one's okay, this one just needs to come down a bit. That's feeling. in. Just flush that off. Just nice. It's not too bad. The glue there. That can go. Okay. Now we'll get the back. And we'll just see if I've got any gaps. Little gaps because I can pull them in, but that's looking pretty good to me. That's good enough. <whistles> Louise! Yeah, well, you, you missed the semi ramp. Oh, I was just Expressing my total satisfaction with Telstra. Mmm. I mean, us people, we, we got a stream, you know. Don't care about anything else. Amazes me, I can't get. Here you go, Mini Ran. How come I can't get good whatever it is? What, what is it that they give you the stream on? Whatever it is. Signal. I can't get good. Signal, but the signal's good enough for me to get about 30 prank calls a day telling me the federal police are on the way, it's the tax department, they're going to give me an opportunity to, to do something wonderful or I've just inherited $56 million, will I supply my bank details so they can put it directly into my account. But poor old me stuck in the woodshed trying to have a nice stream connect with beautiful people like you, have a good time, share some information, enjoy ourselves. Oh, no, we'll cut his signal down because it's not important. Yeah. Anyway, that, was that all right, uh, Louise? Did you like that one? That was just a mini rant. Okay. <laughs> I've got to see if I can find the doodab for me whatnot. Oh. Now, I did have a had it. Where is it? Oh. Uh. No, nah, that wasn't it. Got to find, got to find. Well, perhaps I haven't got one, I don't know. I thought I did, but there's many things I thought that never were. Have you ever done that, had a dream and it's so real and you wake up and you're just so disappointed? Oh, what's this one? What's this one here? Oh, give me a look. No, I've no idea what I cut that one for. Why would you cut that? It's too short. I don't know. Well, don't tell me off. No, I don't think I've done that. Let me get, I'll we'll get this one. Oop. Oh, wait a minute. No, 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 no. It's the bigger at the back, bigger at the front. I can never tell. Bigger at the back than the front. No, it's smaller at the back. <sighs> so... That's smaller, that's smaller. Here we go. All right. Tell you what, if I haven't got flavour in me coffee, it throws me. No, it's the same size. Everything's good. What I'm going to have to do is find the centres, put a centre line mark, 
and then I think this one's got a cut off on it. There we go. Yeah, <laughs> I'm with you. It was that Mark, Mark, the mugger mate. I'm with you. Bunch of parasites. Uh, okay. Oh, look at that. I have already got the lines marked. What are we on this one? All I'm doing is just marking this so I can find the centre and cut that off. I've got to develop a better way of doing this. I'm sure there's a better way. Which way is that going to go there? That's going to go there. making it extremely difficult to do this because we've lost that chunk on the other side so I'm just gonna have to do it like this I think put a mark there one there And one there, and one there. So that should be down the join, but I tell you what, very hard to see the join in that. It's a nice piece of timber. Now we'll measure across here. Hi Brenda, how are you? Good to have you along as usual. Uh, Louise, I hear you, I'm having the same problem with the new setup from the stupid tax man. <laughs> yep, sounds like your mobile reception might be better than your hardwired lamp. Well, um, yeah, no, I am hardwired down here. I'm running a, a 60 metre internet cable from the house down to here. But the phone one is actually Wi-Fi coming off the router I've got that I've got the hard wire to. So I don't know. Oh, they'll tell me because I'm running a long cable. That's, that's what the problem is. Yeah, righto. Whatever. All right, I'm thinking that's going to be pretty close. Oh. So I'm just going to see how close this is with the compass. That's into that corner. That's into that corner. That is spot on, Noddy. Oh. And we'll 
pop that one there. That one there. I am! Come in and say hello to the world. Say hello to the world. Well, I decided I'd stream because cause you went shopping and no one was here and I got lonely and I don't have a dog and the chickens aren't talking to me. I oh, see. I, I, look at that. See, I did housework. I made the bed. Look at this. This is what happens, fellas, when you make the bed. You get a cuddle. And I bought you some Tim Tams. And she bought me some Tim Tams. What sort? Some dark ones. Was, some it on, was they on special? Yeah. You want to go and get a packet and we can all have Tim Tams? I got double chocks, caramels. And I got, I think it's about four packets of the dark ones. But I thought Are you talking you cartons more... or did you just get packets? No, I got cartons of the double chocks and the cartons. Cartons of Tim Tams. Is this a woman you want to marry or what? There you go. Give the mooch. <laughs> I've only got four or six or something of the dark chocolate ones. But you oh, because I don't count. Yeah, no, that's fair enough. You and I can go later. I didn't want to make oh. advertising for the grandkids. See, that's what it is. You've got grandkids, you... She's funny. She, well, she is. She's funny. She married me. How funny do you want to get? But when we go, well, she goes, Sue, my wife, goes shopping for Tim Tams, which for those of you who don't know, absolutely the best, the most gorgeous, delicious biscuits in the world if you're a chocoholic. And we buy them by the carton. Not by the packet, but by the carton. And so the groceries have to get unloaded on one side of the house and then she drives around to the other side of the house which our bedroom's at with an ensuite, and we smuggle them <laughs> in through the bathroom. But Anthony has seen this lot. Has he? Well, just tell them they were for someone me, else. He helped me unload them. Oh, well, there you go. They're half gone then. <laughs> no, that's lovely. Do you like that? Isn't that lovely? Isn't that yeah. pretty bit of timber? Yeah. So I was just lining all this up, mm -hmm. and I thought I'd come down here and have a bit of... Everyone's going to be saying hello, sir. Um... Uh, no, they haven't come through yet. Oh. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm having a thing about Telstra at the moment. Oh, okay. Just... oh there's a parcel up there. Oh, oh! Is it from these syrups? Oh, I don't know. Does it look it's as heavy. if it might have bottles in it? Probably. It's heavy. Can you send Anthony down with it? And I'll give myself a... Oh, if it is, just open one of the bottles and I'll come and I'll have it. Sounds good. There you go. Yep, there you go. See, they're now all saying hello, Sue. Hello, everyone. Sue said hello, everyone. All right, where are we up to? Hi, Steve and everyone. Did I? Yeah, you did. Yeah, very small. <laughs> I tell you what, I'm just reading it. They don't have many friends, do they? Um, poor people. Uh yeah, that's the one, yeah. Well, they don't improve, no, sir. They don't improve, prove or provide. There you go, Louise. Mm. <whistles> da -dum -ba -dum -bum. See, everyone says hello to Sue. Yeah, no, we're always being sporty. G'day, Tom, how are you? Thanks for coming in. Um, oh, I've lost, I've lost my pencil. She mentions chocolate, and I just lose it. I tell you what, I mean, I, I make a joke about making the bed, but those that have been following, have been making this bed. Now, Louise, before you chip in, I've actually been making the bed for two years, but I have been promising it for eight years. And it is a super king. I tell you what, I'm going to put a petty meter on me <laughs> next time I have to make it because you walk a couple of k's. It's just, it's huge. And the mattress on it, I think it's got to be 14 inches deep. I don't know what that is in metric. Um, hang on. 50, three, 350 deep. Oh, but you just, and it's just like a big, Big, huge pool of cotton wool. Ah, oh, lovely. 
sleep well. In fact, in fact, you sleep so well, she's not here, so I can say. Sue slept until half past eight this morning, half past eight. I took her in a cup of tea and I had to go and reheat it because it had gone cold. She slept in, but she obviously needed a sleep. So I won't, won't begrudge it. All right, let's just let's check this. This is a fun thing. When you've got to think and do stuff while you're streaming, I'm sure to some of you people it's as boring as the proverbial, but the reality is I'm thinking out loud. Gee, I'm trying to find that join. It is so good. Oh, I know what I've got to do too. I will, I'll do that while I think of it, if I can find it. I, yesterday I did a, an experiment, experimental glue up. It's a new way I wanted to meet. What I'm doing here, by the way, in case you're wondering, this is, for those that don't know, that is hide glue, animal protein glue, which is in most cases my preferred glue. Um, especially when I'm making furniture. And I'm just gonna mix a new batch up. And this is how I mix it. So you fill a container up and then you cover it with, you can't even see, look at that. Then you cover it with water, like that. Get a pencil, poke it all through so the water Penetrates right down to the bottom. And we will leave that there. Well, not there. We'll put it over on the bed. For maybe 15, 20 minutes. I'll just turn the glue pot on. And then we'll melt it down. I'll find that. Bit of, bit of, bit of, bit of timber I did to it yesterday. And it came up well. So I've got to do some big glue ups today. Oh, there you go. Oh, I just dropped it. Oh, yep. Genuine 100% Australian old man noises, are ya? So that's it. There, uh, glued with high glue. And the reason I want to do it for the beehives that I make. I make native beehives. For those who don't know, I've got native bees. And I've got a nice amount of Japanese cedar, but it's, it's just absolutely glorious stuff. It smells divine when you work it. And some of the colour range is spectacular. This is the same stuff. It's all plantation grown over a 30, 35 year period. And It'll go from that colour through to this, or even darker. Can't come here. You come here, you big life. Can you remember? Can you remember when I started streaming? Can you remember Anthony, right? He's about this big. Have a look at him. He could eat himself. Look. Say hi, Ants. Hi. See, he's a big lad. I'm proud of him. He's good. And, and I can do this because he won't let me do it in the house. He shies away. Did you bring some Vickies, dear? No. Did you bring some? It was weed killer. Oh, God, don't give me that. I'm not putting that in me drink. <laughs> well, that's, that, that's something. Yeah, we got some weed killer. Um, because, again, because of the native bees, if I use Roundup, what I've been told, if one bee goes on a Roundup flower or something and then goes back to the hive, you can lose your entire hive. So I've got this stuff and they told me it's, What's the place called? Bioweed, and it's something or rather, but uh, it won't harm pets or animals, and it doesn't have something or other that the other ones have that it sits on the plant and it's deadly for a couple of days. Whereas this stuff goes on, that's it, it's good. So, hey, there's a job for you. We can start spot weeding. Not yet, wait until I come up. Wasn't going to. Yeah, go. <laughs> See? Lazy but honest.
You've got to give him that. He's honest. He got a new bike the other day too, and I think he likes that. Do you like it? Yeah, no, he's pretty proud of that. Yeah. That's it. And he won't give me a pillion. <laughs> all right, Darwin, thanks. Oh, so, all right, what do I get up to? See, I got confused. Again. Again. So that can go there to there. All right. I've just got to check this on the plans, but I'm thinking that should be okay. Oh. There we go. I just want to measure just a couple of things. I suppose I could refer to another um, Oh, crikey. Got harps coming out in the wazoo here. Oh, okay. Let's just. This one. Oh. Okay, that's 77. That's good enough. That's 77. Okay, that'll do. That will do. This is one we've got to put the solid finish. I've got to put some solid edging on the bottom here, here, and on the top. We'll do that shortly. We'll just get this one finished first. What is happening? Uh, G'day Trevor, how are you mate? So Joe had you down as a marked man, did he mate? You renegade, I bet you used to walk on the wrong side of the footpath as well. <coughs> I'm just referring to a post that Trevor put up on Facebook earlier. Mm. Okay, now, uh, Mark the maker, yes. It's, it's good teaching, mate, because I learn all the time. I hate it when I learn something and then just remember after I finished it that I knew how to do it a different way. But that's all good. Oh, uh, dear. Well, mate, we got warm weather here. It's, oh, it's got to be over 30 degrees and the humidity. Got to be 80%, I reckon. It is revolting. Oh. oh, excuse me. I'm just reading all the highs to Anthony. Yeah, no, I haven't got any. And um, it's, it's interesting, isn't it? You mentioned that, Trev. Um, from what they tell me, uh, dishwashing tablets can be lethal as well. And you still get idiots eating them. But the, the thing I found this out with the chickens because when we first got chickens about a year ago I was born up on a small farm but didn't take much notice um how did I go from Japanese cedar to bee boxes to chickens but anyway uh yeah you go on the internet ah oh, don't feed your chooks this the chooks won't eat this don't you know what I found out you just chuck it out there mangy mouldy whatever and if they don't like it, they won't eat it. And then you soon learn, okay, they don't like chilies, they don't like onions. Not too fussed on tomatoes, but they'll eat them eventually. They like capsicums, they like pumpkin. But all this rubbish you read on the internet about, oh, don't feed them this and don't. I mean, how do birds in nature get on, for goodness sake? Start of a rant there, Louise. I just checked myself. <laughs> all right, now. That's got to line up with that. That's got to line up with that. I've got to cut that off. Can't use the bandsaw for those of you that started a bit late. The, um, oh dear. The bandsaw tyre broke 
yesterday, my bottom one, so I've got to get a new one. And hi to Heron Forbes too, I missed you yesterday, I gave everyone else the plug. But Heron Forbes, thank you also for your support. Um, let me just cut this, oh, I could do it on the, I'll do it on this saw over here. If you hear a yell, that's because something didn't go right. Oh, it should be okay. We should be good. That still gives me a bit of playroom. Okay. Uh, yeah, we did. Well, it wasn't a huge storm. It was, yeah, I went out and watered all the fruit trees, and then, of course, it rained. So if anyone got rain last night, you can thank me for that because I watered my fruit trees. <laughs> oh, dear. The other day, we, <laughs> we had a big downpour. Oh, it was so funny. Um, it sort of came over and I said, I think we're going to get clobbered. Anyway, the chooks sensed it and they're all up under an old caravan I've got and the goose is out there going, what? what's this? This is funny stuff. <laughs> oh dear, oh dear. They, oh look, I, I wish I got chooks earlier. They are so much fun. Trying to. Okay. All right. So that's going to line up with that there. And this hopefully is going to line up with that there. And then we should be good to go. And we'll give it a burl. Um, I'm going to use, I know I said I love hide glue, and I do. Hide glue is wonderful stuff. Okay, that. Stuff I did before, see how it's all congealed into a solid lump now? So what I do now is go over to my glue pot, which I've got switched on here. Take that out. And I don't know, we might even, might even be able to spin it around so you can see. There you go. I don't know how the glue pot is. It's going be well over 100 years old. And then I'm just going to see it comes out whoop, like that. And my water bottle's empty, so I'll just put a bit of water in it. It's not really scientific. Whatever you think's a fair thing's a good thing. And pop that back in there. And we'll just wait for all that to melt. But um, um, yes, that's what I was saying before. I glued, that's uh, Western Red Cedar, that's Japanese Cedar, and I've glued it together because the Japanese Cedar I've got, as you can tell with those growth rings, is pretty fast growing. And a lot of it, I did have some sticks here. What's that bit? No, that's not it. But some of it has um, knot holes that can go all the way through or twig holes. So that's not ideal in the situation if you've got a hive. So I'm lining it with Western Red Cedar, leaving that rough sawn on the inside so it's easier for adhesion when they're building their broods. And um, then I'll machine it to the thickness I want, which is an inch, 25 mil, and we'll make it from there. But that was what I did that for yesterday, and I'm pretty happy with the result. The other reason I like to use high glue, it's natural, it's just uh, a protein. And there's nothing nasty in it. Not that there's anything nasty in the majority of the PVA glues now. Once they're dry, they're okay. But I figure if you can keep it all natural, it's good. And um, I feel very secure with that double lining. They will be really good bee boxes. And there's a... B Expo, Dr. Tim Hurd's got happening in Belimba on the 5th of February. I think it's an all day event. Um, 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 um. 
Uh, yeah, if you look up Australian Native Bee Association, A-N-B-A, -A, it's got all the details there. I'm a member of that, so I, I'm hopefully I'll get along to it, which will be good. Now, I'm just looking for my glue. Here we go. Ah, I learned a lot about bees, and I don't know what else has happened. I've got to catch up with him later in the, the week and find out. And that's another reason I want to get some more bee boxes done, because these are my latest. I don't know what... I'm on. Must be about version 15, I think. Okay. Now, as you can tell, normally I, I do like double gluing. And it's a bit hard to glue the outside of this when I don't know how much overhang I've got. So I'll show you an easy way of doing a double glue. Without having to precisely, accurately measure everything. Oh, and I've got to refit the hose on one of my water tanks. We're on... Um, tank water out here, which means basically rainwater. And I don't know what's happened, but I, I think I've had some sort of a, a cave in on my 23,000 litre tank, because the water's coming out pretty muddy. So what I'm, it really is quite funny. What I'm trying to do is decant it into a smaller 8,000 litre tank I've got. But of course, every time I do, I think, oh, that's good. And now then we get a, a nice storm and it fills the tank up again. Okay, so I've lined this here with the line I put on there. And I've lined this back one up with this line. And I'm just going to push down evenly all over. And then when I pick that up, I've got a nice little pattern of where I've got to put the glue. See? You've got to be pretty, pretty quick with this stuff, though, because one of the things I do like about it is it goes off. Apparently, it's a preferred luthier's glue. I don't quite consider myself a luthier, but I'm not bad for an amateur woodwork. Here we go. Go along the base here. Actually, I don't think I'll, I'll do it again in a minute and I'll just show you why I double glue. And a lot of a lot of the products I know they say glue only one surface. Well that's fine but I want to make sure that I've got a really good contact on the glue so I don't know if they're trying to save you glue or what. Now I'm just going to go over here with a very really thin bead again because I've um, taken a bit of glue off. I can feel it under my fingers. It's already starting to tack off. So I've got to be pretty quiet. I think the open time on, on um, Type Bond Originals is five minutes. Whereas Type Bond 2's 10 minutes, I think, and Type Bond 3's pretty good. Okay, so here we go. Line this up with that again. Now I've got a little bit of an overhang there. The reason for that, this comes back at a slope. So now with the overhang, I can feather that in. If I have it directly on the edge, I've got sort of a, a, a kink in it, which isn't particularly what I want. So that's good there. I'm just going to pick this end up and make sure that this spot here lines up. Well, look at that. This spot here lines up with the spot I've got under there. And it doesn't. It's about three quarters of an inch out. Okay, I'll pull that back into line. Then we go 
back down here. Let's pull that off there. So that can go back on there. Let me go back up here. And let's move that a bit. And we'll put that back there. Then we come back down here. And that's looking pretty all right, I think. So let me go back up here. And that's knocked it out again. Okay, that seems good. Oh, get a couple of calls if I can find them. Here we go. Once I get one clamp in, I'm pretty right. Up. There you go. This is one of my pet hates. Oh, that's, I don't like that word hate. My pet dislikes, it might be a nicer way of putting it, is when you've got people in your workshop and you're doing something like this, they just want to help, you know, and no, go away. And the reason being, I work by myself, so I have to learn how to do things by myself. And if I've got someone there all the time holding stuff for me or doing this or doing that, it irks me. So that's it. If you ever come down and pay me a visit, and I'm working, do me a favour, don't try and help. I'm sure you have the best of intentions. And the other thing is, oh, when um, and you talk to any woodworker, and I reckon they'll vouch for, vouch for this one, when you're sawing, it doesn't matter if you're on a table saw or on um, a band saw, when you're feeding it through, if you've got someone there, they can't help themselves. They just... That's about half a mil out. Wait a minute. That'll do. Um, they have to pull the wood out the other end. It's called tailing out. But... Very, very rarely do you get anyone that can tail out straight. And what they do is, as they pull it, they'll either pull it into the blade or into the fence, which gives you a crooked cut. I know people are trying to help. Mm. There we go. Now, the other side. Mm. And then the other thing is, if you want a hand, you'd say, oh, could you give me a hand? It's, you know, it's pretty easy. I should have another one of those, but I don't. Oh, how long is that bit? Oh, that's long enough. We'll use this bit. There you go. And um, those of you that have ever done any mechanics or you've ever changed the head gasket on a car, the same principle applies when you're gluing something like this up. Put your first clamp in the middle and then put your clamps from the middle out. And what you're doing then is you're flattening out this piece that you're putting on, whereas if you clamp here, depending how thick your wood is, if you clamp here, then clamp here, that might have a little bow in the timber and you're just not doing it any favours. So when you actually get to this middle clamp, you've got a bit of a hump. So when you clamp that down, it puts extra pressure here 
and either side of that clamp is a weak point. And then, supposedly, when you're taking the clamps off, you start at the outside and then work your way into the middle. Now I told you this, this would be just stuff, didn't I? Oh. I don't, don't know how I'm going to go here because I've got to um, turn it over and clean some glue out if I can. Oh. Where was that piece that I had? That'll do. Look at that. Made to order. Hey, you mongrel. Um, ah. Again, um, as I was doing yesterday, these cheap cork blocks, they, they're they just great for clamping. Get a Bunnings to buy some more. Um, because the clamp will actually bite in. And what this clamp is trying to do here is straighten up. So it'll keep on shifting and sliding off because this is at an angle. Whereas if you're using the cork block, it bites in and sort of helps straighten the clamp up so it doesn't slip about so much. Okay, I'm clean some. Whoa, Louise! Nearly sent you veneers flying. Okay. I'm not worried about cleaning up so much on the outside of the coffee because when I <clears throat> come to route it, having said that, I've got some big runs here, so I'm gonna, I don't know if you can see them. I've got some big runs here, so I am actually gonna clean those. Let me just go and change my water. That water's looking a bit disgusting. that be a tick. The other thing, if you're ever going to build a workshop, make sure you've got a tap close at hand because the amount of times you need water. Ooh. There we go. Nice clean water. Where are you off to? You're going to go and lay an egg. You're a good girl. Oh, there you go. Chicken's work is never done. Oh. Okie dokie. So, clean bucket of water. Cleanish rag. And. Put a rag down the end to catch all the water. It's going to. Rip off the edge of them. See it now. Okay, here we go. I'll tell you what. When I wet this, the colour is just absolutely spectacular. Yeah. You just want to get rid of those big runs. You got a little bit there and it's flat. It's not such a big deal. And these ends here, I'll uh, shape them once this glue's dry and I'm putting the final shape on everything. 
There you go. There you go. Well, I've got it up here. I'm going to do the inside. I don't finish the insides. I just leave them raw. But, and really, someone's flat out, unless they get one of those laparoscopy cameras, they won't see the inside, but it's just pride in workmanship, I suppose. You just want to know that it is nice and neat and clean on the inside. So I'm just cleaning that glue out. knocking everything over. Have a go. too good. It's all right. I'll just put it back on. Oh. Noddy. Fair dinkum. situation when I'm doing this and someone puts their hands in there to help me I go away I can mess it up by myself there we go that should be how's that going no it's not gonna work either we go. Success! Ah, oh, trials and tribulations. Oh, I'll have a chat since I clean this up. Uh, I've got to tell you that. T 
timber. It looks absolutely spectacular when it's got a coat. So a uh, harp maker in South Australia called Peter Kempster in the 70s and he used to make a lot of harps out of this timber. Queensland walnut. But, like everything else, it's very hard to get it nowadays. Luckily I've got a nice supply of it, but that doesn't alter the fact it's hard to get. Okay. I think that will do us. Now, if I'm lucky, I'll be able to pick this up and put it over there without clamps falling off. But, geez, I'll tell you what, it's heavy. But we'll see how we go. that sitting there for a while and we'll get on to the next job of the day. Oh, what's happening? Uh, are we on that one? There you go. It is, it's top glue, Max, top glue, love it. All right, that's done that job. And we'll put that in there and put that back under there. See how this glue is going over here. If it's good, we'll glue some stuff up. If it's not, uh, yeah, a little bit longer. A little bit longer. Okay. So now this box here, I've got to glue end pieces along here and one at the top here on the back and the front I've got a mark there so I don't know what to do with that might come out might come out oh it's not too bad oh I've got a dent here if you get a dent just put water on it just keep water on Providing no fibres have been taken out, if you just keep putting water on it, it eventually will swell up again. So there you go. Uh, now. Now, 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 now. This is the, um, whoops. Square section that I cut that's gone over here, so I've got to put it here. But I don't want this ridge on the bottom, so I've got to um, cut it straight. And I'm not sure if I can do that or not. Let me have a look. No, I don't think I can because. I've rounded over, I just want this straight. But, see so that's all been rounded over. 
I want a straight bit, and if I cut a straw, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. No, I might be able to do it. Yep, no, I can. All right. Let's go over to the table saw and see if I can do it. Just pick this camera up here. Put it there. See what sort of a picture you get there. It's all over the place. It's all right. So we'll go over to the table saw and see if I can figure it out. These are all the brass offcuts that I had yesterday. I'll to take them up and melt them all down. I'll move this out of the way for the moment. Put it there. Laid down significantly, I think. <laughs> That'll do. And we'll see how we go. Pretty good, might just put it in. Go and see if we can make that fit. Oh. It's got a little bit of a ridge on it, which I'll just knock that out with a plane if I can. Uh, those of you that thought I was going to use a block plane, that's what I'm using, a little Veritas mini block plane. And it's just... to get the smallest of edges off. 
Whereas if I'd used my normal block plane, which was floating around here, I don't know if I'd put it back. I'd like me to put things back. Oh, well, there you go. It, it's just too cumbersome. I can use it, but I can't see what I'm doing. Whereas with this little chap, I've got total control and I can see just how far I'm going down. And for those of you that think they're toys, no, they're not. They're actually bona fide woodworking tools. Where's the other? This is the one I love too, this one, if I can find it. Most likely can't find it. It's um, a little rebate plane. There we go. It, this one here. I was using it the other day too. So there's horses for courses. All right, so that's nice and done. That's done over there, that's done over there. Give it a bit of sand. See you, Trevor! off. It's got a very slight angle to go there. So we'll cut that one first. <coughs> Marry it up. That's all good. Just as easy to do it with a chisel, I suppose. Hmm, <sighs> might refine that with a chisel. It's got too longer trailing edge on it. There you go. And it's lovely. Bring it up to here. Mark off where you want it to go to. Just there. Same on the other side. I'm going to leave this long because it's much easier to cut a straight edge than a champered one. Yeah, if only that was true. Well, I, I guess it would be true if it was Jeff Hanna or someone, the true master. But if it's me, yeah, no, it's 100% totally accurate after about the eighth time. So if you've got any tricky angles like that, always leave longer on the other end because then you can refine it. That's, that's pretty darn good there. So now we'll cut this off here. Whoops, slippage, that's all right. We can live with that. Okay. So that's looking pretty good. Now we've just got to glue and nail that in. 
And for nails, for those of you that have seen it before and those of you who have not, I'm using household pins for nails. A little smear of glue on the underneath. Make sure it's nice and rounded because once it goes on, it's going to be very hard to sand it. And this one. Okay, do them one at a time, don't glue them both on together because you might have some issues nailing them. And if that's the case, your glue is going to be gone off before you've actually got it accurately where you want it. Okay, now when I'm putting this down too, I'm putting it down above the glue line, not straight on, and that way, I, if I've got excess glue, I can actually move it down so I don't get a big smear of glue up the top. I've got a little bit there to clean up, but not too much. All right, so that's nice and snug along there. Get a pin. A little hammer. Nail it just like you would any other nail. Work out how much you need. Cut it off. Nail it home. If you're going to be nail, nail, if you're going to be nailing near an edge, don't do it on your first nail, because there's every chance you're going to split that bit of timber. But if you do it on the second nail, it won't split. And the reason for that is because it's got a flat end, and the flat end will actually punch through the timber, um, whereas if you've got, I, sh I should get those tweezers, shouldn't I Vince? If you've got a point, it wedges its way through and that separates the timber and causes a split. Whereas if you've got a flat end, it pushes its way through the timber and won't cause a split. So here we go. Hold that. <laughs> Remember where you put your hammer? Oh, there it is. Put it there. A couple of knocks. As soon as it's in, then just knock that head off. Like that. good clouds at the end and they're almost almost invisible nails same on this one a little bead of glue there and a little bead along there Okay, start up a little bit, push it down to where you want it, clear that glue off, get a pin, now I've got the tweezers, I'll use them, move it up to the edge, 
This little bit here can get cleaned up later on. And let that home come up the other end. not going to be good for anything so and the last one in the middle there we go get the rag out clean that glue out from the corner And the reason this looks all motley and possibly not nice and the brass is all horrible is because the electrolyte that I use when I'm doing the Lichtenberg burning, one of the side effects is that turns everything yellow. In this case, it worked to my advantage because I really like the color that it's left. Uh, if you didn't want it, all you do is wash it down with plain ordinary household white vinegar and it'll go back to the original timber color. Oh, look at that. You have good days and bad days. I've just spilt me pins. I'll, I'll talk to you while I'm doing it. Uh, I've just lost my chat again, so I'll have to have a look at that in a tick. Bum, 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 bum. Bum. Could have been worse. They could have gone on the floor. There we go, we're all back now. <sighs> okay. Get another piece. This has got a double angle on it. So that's already the same angle as down here, which is seven degrees. So that's cool. So I've got to bring it up here. This has got to be a bit of a guesstimate. But if I go a little bit, a little bit fatter than I think I need, then um, it's okay because I can pair it back. But if I cut it exactly what I need, I've got nowhere to go. I'll just take that back a smidge. Take a bit off the tail. And that, I think, is pretty darn good. I'm just going to get that, oh, it's off. I was going to say, I was going to rub off the pencil that was there, but it's not there anymore. Uh, there, a little bit on the back here. Yeah, look, honestly, um, doing woodwork's a bit like watching grass grow. You know, you can have the spectacular woodworking sites with the time delay and that, but when you're doing a live stream, it's going to take as long as it's going to take. And I make no apologies for that. Okay. Get 
away with two nails in there. That's the downside. Sometimes the pins, they bend very easily. So you've got to just be mindful. If you see it starting to bend, stop. Okay, this one started to bend, <coughs> but it hasn't fully gone into the wood. So I'm hoping, Trent, I hope you're not watching. There you go. If I can get it out. That's another truism too. If you are using a nail and it bends, just throw it away. And get another nail. You're letting yourself in for a heap of hurt. If you straighten it out and then you put it back in, it's going to bend again. Okay, that's done, that's done, that's done. Now I've just got one on the back to go. And that is it. That chicken I was talking to the other a little bit earlier when I went to get the water. Sounds like she's just laid her egg. Okay. Now a little bit off. Just a little bit. That will do. That will do. Good day, Cam. How are you? I'll be with you shortly. I just I got one of them concentration type moments. Idiot. Oh, hang on, hang on. I possibly am, but no, that that will be all right. That will be okay. I put it in. I thought it was upside down, which would have been upside down, but the way this gets dressed. It's going to be okay. It's going to look okay. Now I've got a bent pin here, but I do have a bit of a straight section on it. So I'm just using the. So that's bent, so throw that away. But this little bit here, it will work okay. There you go. So that's got to be cleaned up and sanded over, which I shall do very shortly. That dent that was on the side, if I can find it, that's come out significantly. So I'll give it a couple more wets and it should be there no more and this one now is just about ready 
to be put together. I'm awfully excited about. Oh, and if my glue's good. Yep, that's ready to go. So what I will do, but I'll do it offline because I've been doing it for about an hour and a half and that'll do me. Um, I'll glue those up and show you that next time I stream, whenever that may be, maybe tomorrow. Depends, but tomorrow's Australia Day. Happy Australia Day to everyone that celebrates it. And if you don't, well, that's okay too. Enjoy the day off. Uh, okay. I think that's it. We did do a lot today. It may seem like we didn't, but we did. Put the back on that Queensland walnut harp. Finished the end um, side rails on the black lightning harp. And mixed up some glue for some bee boxes. And whatever else we did. I don't know, but I had fun. I hope you did. If you're new to the channel and you'd like to subscribe, please hit the subscribe button and the bell and that'll let you know when I'm on again. And if you have any questions pertaining to woodworking at all, please ask me in the comments or if you catch me live, you can ask, ask me live and if it's possible, I'll stop what I'm doing and do my best to answer your query. But for now, it's time for me to pull the shed door down and say, remember to keep it safe. More importantly, keep it safe. Look after yourself, be kind to each other. And I look forward to having your company in the workshop at the bench again very, very soon. Till then, look after yourself. Say good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night. Catch you all later. God bless. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.